Atlantis clues from Anunnaki and Nazi UFOs. That's a topic we're going to be doing today and we got so much information I'm just going to jump right in. I don't have time for anything else to be quite honest. The hockey game is starting soon, so let's begin. Alright, what I did is I was getting some information about ancient maps that possibly could be from the, the Anunnaki. And I just closed everything and I can't see it. There we go. That was a great start to the show. <laughs> I was hoping to get quickly into it and just totally screwed it. But okay, let's begin. Where was I? Oh yeah. Talking about how this map could actually be from the Anunnaki. So there's uh, been quite a few episodes of Ancient Aliens and they talk about uh, a couple of them about this map called the Piri Reese map and they think that it could be like on from aliens just because how much stuff this map actually shows so what I plan to do is have a picture of this map ready to go but apparently not alright here it is yeah so ancient aliens has been showing this map and you can find it on Wikipedia I'm gonna include it down in the links below so that you can check it out yourself too and uh, basically it shows South America bit of Africa, bit of going up the coast to North America, at least people theorize because this map is like the scale is a little bit messed that you can imagine. The guy who drew this uh, was named Perry, Me Perry Reese at one point but his name is uh, I guess he's formally known as that because the Wikipedia started to update what his real name was and all that stuff so anyways I won't get too much into Perry Reese or I guess maybe I will Let's do that. Yeah, so how did Perry Reese get this map from the Anunnaki? Or apparently, it's one of the theories I'm going on is uh, because the map was showing parts that uh, weren't known at the time, people thought like he might have got it from somewhere amazing. So I guess like maybe aliens would be pretty amazing or the Anunnaki. And I was thinking if this was really true that Perry Reese had this from the Anunnaki, we should see that in like maybe some sort of evidence about him. And I, I found out what was it, the, the average lifespan at Perry Reese's time was between the age of 30 and 40. And I guess uh, Perry Reese lived to be almost 90, but then he was uh, beheaded. And I guess he was beheaded because he was still actively in battles, or it's pretty wild to think at that age. Like he's already tripled the average lifespan, that people had to behead him to stop him. So maybe he was immortal, and that's the, the proof that he got this map from the Anunnaki. So I guess that. Uh, could be pretty extravagant proof, but uh, maybe I'll just throw up the, the links for Perry Reese's stuff and see if there's anything else I forgot to mention here. Now, I guess this Perry Reese guy, too, he was born into a life of being at war. When I was checking it out, it was saying that, uh, yeah, that he was born, I guess his uncle was the one looking after him. And his uncle was always on a ship at battle, so I'm assuming he would have been raised on a ship. So that would explain probably why he was so good at maps. I can imagine growing up on a ship, he'd probably be looking at maps all the time. And so there we go. So there's the Perry Reese stuff. More information about having the new world. The description, South America and all that stuff, before Columbus. The the map was discovered on the, or the 9th of October 1929. That's pretty sick. I heard they still have pieces of it in different uh, Turkish museums as well. It's pretty sick. Alright, well, I guess we don't need too much more information about Perry Reese. If you want to learn more about him, just Wiki Wikipedia him or watch the Ancient Aliens episode. It's really cool. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, next I guess I'll get into... Oh yeah, so what I did too is I was thinking uh, this Perry Reese map is pretty wild. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if I could uh, map it onto Google Earth? So uh, I attempted to do that when I had some time off work. And I guess I'll bring that up next. Yeah, so I basically followed the same 
general pattern that Perry Reese was using and see, see if I could have any luck mapping it onto the globe. And after working on it for a few weeks, 40 hours a week, I managed to get a decent pattern going. Then I found out the different ley line researchers uh, around the globe share stuff on Facebook, so compared mine to some of their maps, and there's definitely some similarities in it. So it's uh, pretty wild. Uh, I was thinking if I got this map, and it's really from the Anunnaki, can you imagine that it shows Atlantis? So for a while I was trying to think like uh, these gravity well pattern or shapes, circles, pretty much influence island chains to be circles around them. And you'll find it in different places. And uh, I was talking to Julie Ryder about it, and she mentioned that she thought that Atlantis uh, has like many bases around the world sort of thing. I was thinking, yeah, maybe one for every gravity well around the world. But I was thinking, ideally, like it wouldn't be every gravity well, just because a lot of locations it would be too cold and you just wouldn't have island chains around it and stuff. So I started looking, uh, you know, like Atlantis, here's Gibraltar. This is where Plato was saying that uh, Gibraltar is beyond, right? Or that Atlantis was beyond this strait. So I started looking like different the gravity wells for island circles beyond Gibraltar and see if this map could actually help give me a clue to it. And as I was checking each one, you can see that a lot of them have different shapes of the gravity wells, but uh, one that stood out and caught my eye was the one halfway between uh, Africa, South America, and South Pole. Or So yeah, when I zoomed in a bit, I was like, hey, we even got a little bit of an uh, island chain around here. But then when I checked out what these islands say, a lot of them were saying stuff like these are sunken islands, that they were like recently sank, so they're not anything that uh, you can check out today. What do we got here? I highly doubt that's there, but I'll turn off the photos for now. That's a bit distracting. Anyways, so I was like, hey, like, I'm going to zoom in to the ocean floor. Maybe if Atlantis sank here and all these sunken islands are it, we'll, we'll get some evidence for it. So, <clears throat> I'll turn off some of the other stuff that's a little bit distracting here. Um, there it is. Alright, so when I zoomed into the bottom, I seen that there's like circular patterns right around the center, and that this place has a name, and it's called the Schwabenland Seamount. And when I first discovered this name being here, I was like, oh, that's kind of funny, you'd have to zoom in all the way to the bottom of the ocean in this precise location just to find out that it's called this. It's like, I wonder if there's any clues or information that we could get from it. It's like, it looks like I need to adjust this line a bit. But anyways, I guess I'll adjust that line later. I shouldn't do it during the live show. So anyways, the, the Schwabenland Seamount, I was like, hey, it sounds something German. Wouldn't it be kind of funny if the Nazis were involved? Because here I'm talking about the Anunnaki and Nazis and UFOs. So I was like, huh, I should check the what the heck the Schwabenland Seamount was named after and see if I can find out any clues about it. So, one of the first things for clues, I decided, hey, I should, uh, well, let's see, I'm going to Google the, sorry everybody, i got so many monitors in my new studio, and every time I'm opening it, it's opening it on the wrong monitor. i got to try to fix that soon. But anyways, so yeah, the show, there we are. Ah, the MS Schwabenland. Yeah, so when I was tracking to see, uh, Oh, that's a little bit head. Yeah, what these islands or sunken sea mounts were named after. It was, uh, here, I'm already jumping ahead. Ah, here it is. Alright, so first I went to this website, the geographic stuff, and found out about the sea mounts. And I found that they even, oh, I don't even have it showing. There you go, guys. So yeah, I went to this geographic website and got the information. Found out that this was the Seamount. 
the Schwaben Lawn C mount, made sure I had the correct location. Let me just refresh this. I managed to zoom in and away from it while I was talking. Alright, so you can see that there's that little ridge like circle pattern around it. I was like, that reminds me of the shape of Atlantis. Like, like how many times do you see pictures of Atlantis and it's always circles around the center of something? So it's like, that'd be pretty wild if that's what we're looking at right here. So I don't know, was it this website? I'll check. I think what I did after that is I typed in the Schwabenland Sea Mount into Wikipedia and found out that it was uh, named after a ship called the S something Schwabenland. Uh, a vessel that was used by the Nazis. So I was like, holy, that's, that's pretty wild, right? So I guess I'll bring that one up next. Okay, so the next one was, yeah, the vessel. Alright, so this vessel was the MS Schwabenland from 1925. I guess this would be before the Nazis that this vessel was first began. I thought the Nazis were 40s, but I don't know, maybe someone wants to... Oh, the third German Antarctic expedition. Yes, I guess it would have been the Nazi time, 1938-39. Yeah, and they were talking too that this ship wasn't like the most advanced like war vessel that it was more of like an expedition type ship and uh, yeah it talks about how that it sailed from uh, World War two Alright, it was borrowed in the third German expedition. The ship sailed in secret from Hamburg on the 17th of December 1938, carrying 82 men and some seaplanes. Wow. The ship contacted the German whaling fleet off the Boffet Island and then anchored near the edge of the pack ice. After the expedition had completed its work, Schwaben, Schwabenland headed north at 30, in 1939, reaching Germany again on the 11th of April, just nine days before Hitler's birthday, I guess. Right? Made it back just in time for the pate. <laughs> Wonder what they're doing for 420, right? All right, um, let's see here. Yeah, I noticed there was a lot of different debate about this whole expedition. I guess for the main point is when you try to look up what the Nazis were doing, all of their records were destroyed by the Nazis themselves because it was getting used against them in war crimes court. So they didn't want anyone knowing what they were doing. So technically, the only information we have is that this ship went to Antarctica and apparently set up a base, but there's no evidence of the base. So it's like a Nazi conspiracy that hey, they built this amazing base there, but no one could find it. So I was like, well, what does this have to, to do with the, that sea mount that's on the bottom of the ocean there, right? So we'll see, what else do I got here? Yeah, I started looking up the history of this, uh, why the, the name of uh, the ship got the name. There's this part of like an Aryan history from the Germans that part of German people was Swabians. And these Swabians have like this uh, like mystical history, I guess, too. Oh yeah, New Swabia is apparently this base and they showed it on Antarctica. Oh yeah, that was the thing too. Like they couldn't find evidence for this base. It's been mainly like just a conspiracy theory. But the conspiracy theorists were trying to say it was somewhere else, like, excuse me, inner earth or some shit like that. But that was funny when I was looking at this map where they were showing the territory. It's like they put a little orange dot near where the Schwabenland Seamount is. So I guess maybe if none of the records survived, that maybe just that little dot on the map is all that's left.
Alright, so I do got some more information that I think can uh, enlighten us a little bit more to what was going on there. So I guess I'll go back to Google Earth. And for Google Earth, I got some pretty wild stuff here, like thinking if you were the Nazis and you took that ship through here and you set up a base somewhere, if you were gonna set it up on South what is it, South Africa, it's probably gonna be a lot of people attacking you, like Cape Town's pretty popular and it's not like isolated or anything, right? So I think uh, all these other island chains around it that recently sank, they probably wouldn't be the greatest for a base because you'd have to put it underwater. And as advanced as the Nazis were, I don't think they'd want to be underwater. And probably when they got to like this new Schwabenland area, I guess none of this is actually called that, right? So anyways, they probably didn't want to put any of their bases here, because this is like a giant sheet of ice that you can't just walk up. It's like, I don't know if anyone's heard, but the South Pole's like a giant wall around the edge. Well, I guess not the edge of the Earth, that'd be a flat Earth thing, but it almost gives some credence to why the flat Earthers are so freaked out, is because there is a giant sheet of ice around the edge. But anyways, uh, this giant ice wall wouldn't be the greatest for putting a base. I guess even now the bases have a hard time getting to it, I'm sure. Like, I don't know, a lot of these bases don't look the biggest. Well, is this like mountains, right? It's probably somewhere else that they're able to access it. Maybe the ice wall is lower in one spot for them to get up onto it. So anyways, if you were the Nazis and you wanted to set up a base, oh, there's a place. I guess there is one island. You could either pick here, this Bouvet Island. should probably check more into it. But there's also one that's really popular, well I guess not popular, but popular amongst conspiracy people. And it's called the Thule, or Thule Island. That's this one here. So I was thinking if the Nazis were doing a lot of expeditions, like say diving and stuff, and they wanted to go to this seamount, and they wanted a hidden base, they had a couple different islands close by to choose from. That one, or these ones. And it turns out that this one's got a lot of history of conspiracy type stuff. This Thule Island. So I'll bring up some of the information that I got on that. Might blow your mind. Okay. Yeah, this stuff kind of even freaks me out, to be honest. Like, I don't like talking about gruesome murders and stuff, so... This is kind of disgusting, but I figured since it's part of the information, it's like I have to tell you guys. I can't just do a whole show on this and leave out the best evidence because it's brutal. But all right, so yeah, it's everyone's families who are involved in these murders and stuff or deaths, I guess, weren't really considered murders. But yeah, feel bad for all that shit. All right, so what's been going on at this island is pretty crazy. It's like uh, apparently there's some high level like recent bases that have been set up around this area like why the government would want these like high tech bases there and uh, these bases are all like fucking messed up with crazy conspiracy theory deaths and just want to clarify this isn't a conspiracy theory show or any channel like that according to YouTube that's not allowed anymore so whatever this is I'm sure isn't a conspiracy <laughs> but uh, anyway so yeah like who knows really we got a whole bunch of people like I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube people covering these deaths and it was like this Star Wars program sort of thing that was being set up on this base and they were like doing these crazy weapons programs for space or something maybe not even weapons but holograms or maybe Project Blue Beam but all the like really wild like crazy conspiracy stuff of like your wildest dreams are going on at this island right next to where Atlantis might be right so anyways it's like uh, I was thinking all these wild deaths and stuff it's like uh, what the heck is going on at this island some people are saying it was like this wartime thing it's like you know how like prisons when you go into prison and you try to come out after a long time you don't like re 
adjust to society again they say so they were saying like maybe these scientists were like so deep into some brutal project on this island that they never properly adjusted themselves back into society right And yeah, and the way these guys died too is like really freakish. Like they said, some of them's like were set up with like where's the car crash one there? It's like one of the most gruesome car crashes they ever seen, where the guy like set it up so that he could drive under something that would sever his head in a convertible. And they're like, like why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just like park your car in the garage? There'd be like so many other ways that you could die, like so much less violently. But it's almost like the deaths were set up as examples. Like, you know, when, like, invaders invaded villages in the old day, they would kill the person and hang their body outside the village to, like, discourage people from ever doing it again. So that's what these Marconi scientist deaths started to seem like. It was like, holy crap, like, what's going on with these guys? It's like, I don't know, if you want to check out the videos on YouTube and find out some information about what's going on with these murders, I won't get too much more into that because it's, it's going to freak me out, really. I don't want to get freaked out while doing a live show. Alright, so... Let's see. Oh yeah, so... Uh, I guess get heavier into the conspiracy stuff, or... We'll get into the it's not a conspiracy part of it. Alright, well, let's go. Let's go with a little bit not a conspiracy, just to mix this up a little bit. Alright, Popular Mechanics did a, a story about saying nope, the, there was never a secret Nazi base here, and this is not a conspiracy. Sorry for all the ads. This is apparently Popular Mechanics magazine sales haven't been doing the greatest, I guess. So, anyways, during World War II, rumors swirled about uh, projects about the Nazis and all that such. They're saying no that this Schwabenland vessel that went there wasn't really the greatest. It was like this aging ship and wasn't like some amazing fleet of like the greatest advanced technology like UFOs and such. So they're saying the the abundance of UFO sightings attributed to this was just bunk and there was nothing going on. I guess he's going on that there's like exaggerating about what could be happening there and such. Uh, but I guess, uh, to be fair to the conspiracy stuff, uh, I'll get a little bit more into the, one of the groups shout out that uh, I like to share these shows with on Reddit. So I won't click it because I guess that could cause some crap. But uh, it says here that the, I'll expand it so you can read it with me. It says that this, uh, they were looking into the island in this video something about censorship and the Falkland Island mysteries if people haven't heard about that too it's like more islands around there that have a lot of different countries fighting for them like I guess Argentina and, and England or Britain or whatever it is they've been fighting like for decades for this control of that island so people are like well who cares about these small little islands what the heck's going on there and while wow, these countries are setting up bases there and trying to to fight each other for it yeah there's some mythology and ancient legends about what's under the ice oh yeah there's some society the Thule society goes back to the Greeks so I guess that's something about like uh, maybe like the Swabians the ancient history of the Aryans apparently being connected to Atlantis I know it's weird most people don't know about it but it's like there's a lot of theories that Atlantis was connected to the Aryans and that's why it got covered up and stuff yeah oh yeah here's the craziest shit it's like I don't know if you heard about that black sentient oil in the X-Files but apparently this Thule Island and the scientists some of the stuff they were working on was apparently connected to like rumors of that black oil so that's apparently where the X-Files got it from, was these crazy-ass mysteries. It's like even freaking me out talking about it. I don't know if you can hear my voice breaking up. So it's like this is like Men in Black type stuff where they try to cover up what's going on. And apparently like this island has like the secrets of the universe going on. 
like matrix type stuff and they're trying to control what's going on there some pretty wild shit that could be connected to the Atlantis it's like when I was like following this Perry Reese map and looking for Atlantis I definitely had no idea that I was going to end up looking at the black oil experiments going on in Thule Island it's like who would have thought eh? one thing leads to another All right, so I guess I'll go over my show links and uh, make sure that I didn't have any more information that I wanted to cover. The scientist desk, Thule. Yeah, I guess a big shout out to the conspiracy guys. I can't remember if it was them or the Disclosed TV. We were talking about it. They're they've already got some nice nicknames for me. The the bald, baggy clothed man with the crazy ideas but it's like I appreciate the the comments even if they're kind of funny but it's a good accurate description oh yeah that reminds me too it's like a shout out to uh, the person who gave me this shirt I was thinking if anyone wants to do sponsors maybe I can start wearing shirts of different stuff and then maybe less baggy ones too or I'll end up losing my my popular name <laughs> but anyways this shout out is uh, the Georgia Guidestones there's a show I guess on the internet uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I uh, heard it was really good. And I met the cast from the show in Toronto, and they gave me the shirt. And uh, they gave me a couple bags for it. I almost got the hat for it. I wish I should. I'm going to check to see if they still sell the hat. Yeah, but I think my, the website's on the back, too. Yes, you probably can't see it. I think it's georgiaguidestones.com or something. So, yeah, if, if you're promoting a shirt, it's like, uh, oh, I guess this isn't a paid promotion. I guess I'd have to clarify that this was given to me. So anyways, yeah, if you want to do that in the future, maybe we can arrange something. Yeah, and thanks for the comments, guys. It's like, yeah, I'll get on with the show now. Yeah, so there's some pretty wild stuff about Thule and the, the Greeks. I guess the Reddit page was talking a little bit about that. Mentions different islands. I guess the Antarctic one, maybe. Oh, the Arctic Circle. Oh, that's the North Pole one, I guess. Yeah, the Scythians, they got some pretty wild connections going back to the Anunnaki. Like their history of the sacred trees, very similar to the Mesopotamians. It's like the ancient pagan stuff that goes way back. I guess you don't find out about much of it because it relates to what the Nazis researched and not allowed to look at it, so or even if you were, it's all been destroyed by them anyway, so Yeah, it's crazy all the shit that happened with World War Two. It's awful and especially the all the history that of the world has been covered up ever since just because it's connected to one of the sides that was fighting in the wars. Alright, so I guess there's not too much on the Thule Society or anything that interesting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> In Germany, extreme right occultists believed. Hey, they called them extreme right, eh? It's like I always thought the Nazis were extreme left because they were socialists, but. Anyways, believe that uh, historical Thule, Hyperberia, home of the Aryan race, Proto Europeans, the Thule Society. Some pretty, pretty awful shit, or I guess it is. I don't even know anything about it, but... It's like, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that it says about that. I'm not going to get too into it, because I guess I don't want my channel flagged for having crazy shit on it. It's already crazy enough as it is, I'm sure. Don't want to get into that. Alright, so if you want more information, I've got all the show links in the bottom here. And if I forgot, I'll try to add them to it. Yeah, I'm going to look over my notes here. Oh yeah, there's one last thing I wanted to show. Thank God I was checking the notes. No, I'm sorry guys. I did a couple of shows without notes and I was fucking forgetting everything. So I'm like, hey, I really need show notes or I'm just going to keep screwing up over and over again. <laughs> so instead of screwing up, I got show notes. Well, anyways, let's bring that up. Here on Google Earth, I was looking at the... Here we followed the maps and how it went to... The Schwabenland Seamount, the circular shape of sunken islands that happened recently. And, uh, yeah, and even if you zoom in, just like it shows, you can see like circular ring patterns around the center. 
So if this really was named, the Nazis might have named it Schwabenland because of this whole Thule Society thing and all the different Aryan history connected to these expeditions why the Schwabenland vessel that was on its way to this to the South Pole apparently set up bases it could be connected to this Thule shit all the conspiracy deaths of the scientists but anyways if uh, I've got this Google Earth map going I can show you guys that uh, I also have it rigged up with uh, different KML files or KMZ files that show the plate boundaries of the planet. So I wanted to show how this uh, possibly Atlantis ring was right near where all these three plates connected. That's pretty unique. Like usually when you're around the planet, you might have one or two plates around, but to have all three of them connect in one spot, that's pretty wild, right? So that was some more evidence that this could be Atlantis. Oh, and one thing I even forgot to put on my show notes. When you're following these different ley lines, a lot of them connect to like cities. And I was like, it's pretty cool. Like uh, that's how I can tell that I've got the map somewhat accurate. Is uh, <laughs> somewhat accurate. I fucking change the thing all the time because it's full of mistakes. But uh, anyways, it's like, yeah, when you draw the lines and follow them, to see if any of them go to cool places. And I was like, where is it? Like my map here, in this section, you can see that Ottawa, it's set up so that all the lines on my map just so happen to pass over a place called the Peace Tower. This Peace Tower is like this giant clock that looks like an obelisk. So I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. And then if you surprise surprise follow this map to the next like really large city that's in this area it just so happens to go over Toronto and where does it go over the CN Tower which is an, another giant obelisk so it's like I won't zoom out in all the way I'm sure people have heard of the CN Tower anyway so one of the lines also happens to go to Washington I was like Washington DC here I'll show you this one just for anyone who hasn't heard, the layout of Washington, D.C. is pretty sick. But yeah, so my line just so happens to go over the obelisk in Washington, D.C. And they, the Google has it lined up for the shadow to follow the ley line path. And that's the, one of the examples I wanted to show why this Piri Reese map is so accurate, or I think is. is because it follows the solstice and equinox pass and all that shit. So when you're doing alignments building to the equinoxes it's going to line up on this map and I think that's why a lot of places do without even realizing it like who knows how many people built up something to align to an equinox and had no idea when they did it that it was going to land it right somewhere on this giant map of ley lines or gravity well lines it's more what I like to call them but anyways so when you follow that Washington line to see where it goes you're going to pass through a bunch of places and lo and behold, it lands right in the in the Atlantis one. So I was like, that's kind of neat. Yeah, so that was one of the last things I think I have for show evidence. I guess I'll quickly bring up uh, Facebook and see if anyone posted any comments. But I think everyone's pretty busy tonight. I didn't even see any likes on my show cover page yet. Yeah, so the Earth crust lines, blah, blah, blah. Alright, so yeah, thanks everyone for watching the, the videos on, what is it called, Disclosed TV, that's like one of the sickest pages going these days, and uh, Reddit too, Reddit's definitely got some of the best pages, the viewers that are watching and sharing my stuff on those, I really, really appreciate it, I even got some subscribers on Disclosed TV, it's like sick, I've had a page for I don't know how many years on Disclosed TV, I didn't even know they had subscribers, or maybe that was something they just added recently. I was like, thanks guys. It's like, I'm going to keep making this shit if you guys keep subscribing and stuff. It's pretty intense. Alright, I guess, uh, what do we got here? This is taking forever. It's like, uh, can't find it. Uh, yeah, maybe it was. 
All right, guys. Sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked there. Oh yeah, I was checking Facebook. Yeah, so was checking my Facebook and seeing if anyone posted any comments, and maybe someone did, maybe someone didn't. We'll soon see. No, and heck, if you guys want to make sure, if you happen to be watching on Disclose TV or Reddit, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube page, because as soon as I hit a thousand, what is it, subscribers, then I can start doing Super Chat. And that'll help, like, make sure I get to everyone's comments and stuff. Oh, we had a comment here on Facebook from Happy Person, and they posted interesting, and a thumbs up. It's like, alright, thanks, Happy Person. I appreciate it. 16 people were reached with my show link. I used to have a reach of like 40,000 people, but ever since the recent changes at Facebook or the crappy content on my show recently, I'm now down to 16. <laughs> but we'll see if we can improve that. It's actually for the better, because sometimes I wonder if I'm reaching that many people. I'm like, shit, man, this is freaking me out. I don't want to be reaching that many. If I reach like maybe five or six people, that's more my kind of jazz. <laughs> All right, so yeah. At least I got some comments for the, the show, or at least the show cover there on Facebook, and no messages in the live chat, but uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll keep doing these live shows, and hopefully we can get some more viewer interaction going. I've got Skype set up, so if anyone wants to do Skype calls, they can, we can set that up too. And it's like, and if anyone has some pretty wild ideas and you want to come on the show, it's like, there's no really ideas that are too wild for me. It's like, I don't really mind. It's like, even if you want to talk about aliens and stuff, it's like, aliens are one of my favorite things to talk about. <sighs> yeah, I don't like to get into topics too dark on the show. But even that, maybe a little bit here and there. I know Robert was on talking about his uh, Insane Asylum shows, so I guess we'll be maybe doing another show about those soon. It's been a while. Alright, so I guess the, the hockey game is going to be coming on soon and the stream went on really long. Thanks anyone who actually managed to watch this thing to right to the end. Um, I'm going to try to do some new show topics, maybe not all ley line stuff all the time. But if we get any big earthquakes and hurricanes and interesting stuff that I can check and map on my maps, I'll definitely be doing it soon. So yeah, if you got any other show ideas that you want me to cover, I'm going to maybe call it the live interactive news, so even on the fly just jump in and we can switch topics and we'll do live news and whatever on what anyone wants to talk about All right and hopefully I didn't repeat myself too many times nice or what was the other thing that I was saying I guess I guess I guess I guess I'll try not to guess and nice everything everyone and thank you and if you want to maybe tune in next time I'll have a show coming up tomorrow Hopefully early afternoon, maybe the evening. See how it goes. So anyways, subscribe. What was it? Subscribe and like the video. Yeah, and if you didn't like the video, make sure that you dislike it. And what else was there? Oh yeah, don't share the video. I'm pretty sure it's not a good idea to share these videos. Alright, thanks everyone. Have a good night and take care.